Hello and welcome to Let's Plant Recap. This is a show where I look at your comments from the last episode and react to them. The last episode was episode 95 and it's about when should I separate the pups. It's uh, it's not a long episode. It, it was only 8 minutes long I think. But I'd like to think that it was so packed with information so it doesn't feel like 8 minutes. But surprisingly, I think it filled the need because it gathered lots of views just in its first day and after almost a week of showing it, it has gone over 2,000 views. It looks like a lot of you are interested in this type of content wherein it's not a straight up vlog but more of a, a teaching vlog which I've been doing a long time anyway. But in the past, I think the topics were more conflated, convoluted. It wasn't uh, focusing on a specific topic, so people didn't really know whether they should click on the video or not. So it looks like doing a specific topic per video is a good strategy for my channel. Anyway, there's quite a few comments here, so let's begin. From Blue Bella. Missed it. Sad face. Oh, well, the next episode is coming up on Sunday, tomorrow, and I'll be putting up a uh, I'll be putting up a premiere announcement right after this video, so hopefully you'll make it in time. From Marie Salonga, great video. It's short but packed with information I need. Thanks. Mm. Looking back at all of my content, I've always had the problem of finding out the right balance between information and video length because I like, I tend to drone on and on or add a lot of cinematic shots in there somewhere. I don't know, I st I'm still finding the balance but it looks like that episode was a good example of that. So I don't know, we'll see. I'll see if I could replicate this formula. Yeah, I think that's a word. From Earth's Geomancer, great video. Yeah, I haven't seen your name for quite a while so thank you for watching. From Rudy Succulent Obsession, you have so many pups I have a couple of Echeverse growing pups which is exciting. Thanks for sharing great tips and information. You're welcome Rudy. Um, yeah, with pups basically it depends on what you plan to do with them. If you intend to let them grow the fastest then you would want to keep them for as long as possible. But if you're after being able to separate them and there are many reasons why you'd want to do that. For instance you're planning to sell it so you'll have to have it grow its own roots anyway. Then yeah. I guess you just have to let it grow to a specific size that you're after and after that you could do whatever you want to it. From CC, great info, I'm glad you like it. From Karen Lothering, thank you for that. But my friend Ives Pop that broke off the main stem, it's still tiny and I will keep an eye on him, I just hope he will survive. Yeah, as long as you do not overwater it while it is not yet rooted, is it rooted? Yeah, you didn't mention. but. Yeah, basically, just make sure it is not overwatered, that way it won't rot. And yeah, it's growing season now, since both of us are in the southern hemisphere, so it should not be that long. From Joyce Shelby, beautiful plants, I live in Illinois, it's late fall heading into winter. Yuck. <laughs> Watching you gives me a warm feeling and hopes for an early spring. Ah, uh, yeah. Ever since I started gardening, I'm dreading winter and summer now because in winter there's a high risk of rot especially since i mostly collect winter dormant plants chavarias and in summer there's lots and lots of insects so there's a huge chance that some of the plants would be infested and die from insects so yeah those two extremes i'm not so excited about them from ruby cornista hi chuck nice and informative video any chance you can have a demo on this topic as well thank you I am assuming that Ruby meant a demo of uh, plucking pups. I think I only did a brief sample in this video but considering we're heading into summer, it means that there's lots of growth going on with my Echeverias. I'm pretty sure that by the end of this, I'll be having to, I'll find that I'll have to harvest lots of Imbricata again. So I'll, I guess I'll make a mental note on this. No, not just a mental note, I should write it somewhere. But yeah, I'll do a video on harvesting. Watch out for it. From Aneta S. Harvesting time is one of my favorite. It is so impressive that you have so many happy plants. My Agavoides now have two pups, but because here in Poland it's winter season, I will not separate it from the mother plant as you mentioned. 
we'll stay together for another four months till spring comes. Good idea. Thank you for all the knowledge about separating new babies. It will help me a lot in the future. I'm glad that you find it helpful, especially now that you're heading into winter. So I think it's good that you found out that you shouldn't separate them yet. So basically for all of you in the Northern Hemisphere, try to keep them connected for as long as you can. Try not to remove them yet and wait for spring or at least until it becomes warmer. Because these pups won't be doing anything on their own anyway, you know? So give them a bit of time, just let them bide their time. For those who are keeping their plants indoors under grow lights, I don't have a strong opinion about this but I do think that maybe you shouldn't be so aggressive with your lights. I would suggest that you just mimic the amount of sunlight that they would normally get during your winter season. The only difference is that with them being indoors, they are subjected to a more toler tolerable temperature. Let's say you have this room where you have your grow lights and you keep all of these plants. I would suggest aiming for just keeping the temperatures just above uh, freezing point. So that would be anywhere between 0 to 10 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is at Fahrenheit, maybe 32 to 50. Just, yeah, just make sure that it is cold enough to maintain dormancy but at the same time don't give them too much light that they would think that it is already spring yeah basically allow them to rest just let them rest don't force them to grow through your winter season you're not doing them a favor that way from monolog hello i'm back from having dead internet for about three to four weeks i really need to catch up on your videos <laughs> edit Thank you for the very informative video. Just a year ago, I was oblivious to even know when to remove it, which ended up with dead pups. <laughs> but now I have a lot of pups and I'm just letting them grow. First off, welcome back, man. <laughs> and I'm glad that you found this really helpful because I think a lot of new collectors struggle with this because I find that new collectors are so focused on propagation, on uh, multiplying their plants that they're so excited seeing that new pups new babies have formed and they are so eager to separate them as soon as possible and I can't fault them for that because even I was so excited seeing pups grow for the first time but once you've already seen it for many times you'll be like me where you're a bit for the lack of better word let's just say lazy you will want to leave them on just keep, let them keep growing until they're pushing onto the main plant or deforming or whatever until they you're keeping them on for as long as they are healthy doing so if that makes sense because at a certain point they, they would reach this time where they get so big that they're blocking the underside of the plant drastically reducing the airflow which could lead to rot if not that if they're perfectly norm if they're perfectly normal well ventilated they could also grow in the deformed shape they're trying to squeeze through small tight places so they would not be growing like a proper rosette you know they would be growing as a thin i don't know what we call this squeezy thing i would like to summarize the last video with two points so there are two reasons why you would separate the pups the first would be health reasons and that's for uh, avoiding infestation or rot and the second reason is aesthetic you just don't want them to grow looking weird misshapen or ugly from yolanda avila you have one of the most beautiful gardens i've ever seen thank you so much for teaching us so much about succulents i started i've just started my collection and i am in love keep up the great work thank you for the kind words yolanda and i Hope that I continue being able to be a useful resource for you. From Diego Romero. Hello again, buddy. Just added you on Facebook if you think there's no problem. Yes, I accepted your friend notification request. I am a real lover of succulents and cacti from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm the guy from Laguna Sanchez from Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I would like to know if you have ever decapitated an Echeveria Cante. I got one really nice but it is a little etiolated and I want to chop it off chop it off in order to promote new growth of babies around. What is your experience about doing this with Echeveria Cante? Thank you indeed. I haven't reached the point of having a mature Cante yet. Well, I do have one but it is at leggy at the moment. But I do have experience with chopping afterglows and the afterglow is a Cante hybrid. So the thing is it depends on how your kante is growing right now because 
if they are growing upright, just straight up, no bending, no deformation, then the stem would be very thick and that's really good. It would produce lots of pops. Also considering that Echever is a type of Kante, they have very tight rosettes where the leaves are very close to each other. So if you chop it high enough, you're going to end up with lots of nodes. Which also means that there's lots of these little nodes for the pops to grow on. So yeah, I think they make good propagators. On the flip side, I think the afterglow dries out too fast. Or at least I had problems with keeping my afterglow stump happy. In the end, I managed to let it grow uh, a few plantlets. You'll want to keep it more in the shade or bright shade you know just so it doesn't dry out quickly i think that's the only thing that you have to watch out for the drying out part other than that maybe just water it a bit more than the other plants and you'll be fine from aryan targ Arian. Arian. ah hello sir just four months ago i started my collection of succulents and i've been watching your video since then words aren't enough to thank you i've learned so much from your channel i do have a question though and i really hope you'll make a video about this one how do you train your succulents to thrive outside without rotting? This is a very good question. I think I've indirectly answered it in many of my previous videos. If you have a look at my video about uh, what to do with plants in winter or protecting them from frost, the essence of the video was to teach you how to protect them from rotting because that's a common issue during winter. Keeping them outside, you, there's only two things that you need to give them. The first would be proper drainage and the second would be proper ventilation. With good drainage, um, water would not be pooling around the plant. So this means that they would not be overwatered, especially when it keeps raining. By giving them good ventilation, it means that the undersides of the plant would not stay wet or moist for too long that it would not attract uh, fungal infection. I suggest you look at that video as well as another video I made about how to create a succulent garden in the tropics because I think it answers the same question about uh, dealing with rot and overwatering I guess because in the tropics because the weather and the climate in the tropics differs so much from where I am in the temperate. In the tropics the air is more humid so this plants gather lots of moisture from the air alone what more if you water them so yeah you'd want to start with those two and if you have more questions let me know but otherwise i think my answer to this question was quite long so i guess it deserves its own video hmm. i'll work on that and that's all the comments on the youtube video i'll have a look at the it's time to look at the facebook ones now the video got lots of likes a few hundred views but no comments so ah uh, you might be noticing some of these stalks to my side here. Let me just zoom out. So there's some flower stalks here. I've been removing the flower stalks from my plants over the course of the past week and I made a video about it. So yes, that's the next episode. It's going to discuss what you could do with flower stalks. One of them is propagation and I've also discussed other things that you should be doing anyway. Here's a preview. So the first point of discussion is when do flowers form? The answer to that is very simple. There's a few factors involved but the main thing is of course number one it has to be mature enough because really young plants are more focused on their own growth rather than pushing out flower stalks. And that's it for this recap. I've already started the premiere for the next episode. If you're in my time zone, it should come up tomorrow morning. But if you're at the other side of the world, it should come up tonight. I hope you come to the premiere chat and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.